Okay. <clears throat> Hello. So in this video, we're going to work through Haberman's section 3.4. And the goal of the section is to, as written, describe when Fourier series can be differentiated, right? So kind of previously, right, we saw that, well, if we use separation of variables, right, compute these pieces, get these eigenfunctions, sine or cosine, write things out, yada, yada, yada. Um, we can get a series representation in terms of sine and cosine, and then kind of construct the solution to essentially the heat equation or Laplace's equation in terms of these kind of basic functions. Um, and so kind of our, our next goal is to, well, flip it. We're going to say, well, let's start with the series representation. Can we use that series representation to solve a PDE? And of course, PDEs, right, they involve derivatives. Um, so we'll be taking derivatives of these kind of Fourier series. And so kind of our main question is, well, when does it make sense to take derivatives of Fourier series and have, right, the derivative of the series equal the derivative, uh, the derivative of the function that the series represents. Mm -hmm. So the goal of the section is to describe kind of when we can do that, um, particularly through some examples, illustrating uh, when things work, when things fail. Um, and then we'll kind of come back and actually see an example of uh, taking some derivatives, plugging things in and uh, constructing a solution in terms of Fourier series. Okay. Cool. So, right, suppose we're given a function f, and f is defined on the interval negative l to l. Um, what we can do is we can uh, write f in terms of its Fourier series, uh, right, a sub zero plus the sum of a sub n cosine of whatever plus the sum of b sub n sine of whatever. <clears throat> so what we can do is, well, let's differentiate each, each side. So if we differentiate f of x, right, we're just going to end up with the derivative of f. Okay? If we differentiate this side, what are we going to end up with? Well, derivative of a0 is 0, because a0 is a constant. Um, Take the derivative of the sum and distribute the derivative. Assume that that can be done. Um, right, a sub n is a constant, so the derivative doesn't hit that. Otherwise, the derivative hits cosine of n pi over Lx. And so the derivative of cosine n pi over Lx, that's going to be minus n pi over L sine of n pi over Lx. Okay. Um, and then similarly, the derivative of this thing is going to be n pi over L, so b sub n times n pi over L times cosine of n pi over Lx, okay? So taking the derivative of each side, right, f of x gives us that, the derivative of this gives us that, derivative of this gives us that, okay? But right, what we were working with up here was a Fourier series. Okay, and so this kind of this tilde, this similarity, um, that indicates that, well, this function is not necessarily equal to this Fourier series, right? They may be different at points of discontinuity, but everywhere else, kind of at points of continuity, they're equal. Okay. Um, but, anyways, so the question is, right? If we differentiate the function, and then if we differentiate the Fourier series, we're going to get a different function and a different Fourier series. And so the question is, right, is this, is this object right here the Fourier series of this object right here? Okay. So that's kind of our main, main question right now. Um, and so one thing to note is, well, uh, kind of, so in general, the derivative of an odd function is going to be an even function. And the derivative of an even function is going to be an odd function, okay? And so we can see that pretty explicitly here, right? So if we take the derivative of, an e of this even part right here, 
this is going to give us an odd function, right? Because we have the signs. Likewise, if we take the derivative of this odd part, we're going to get an even function coming from these cosines. Okay. But anyways, so when is the derivative of the Fourier series, right? The Fourier series of the derivative. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So first example, um, we're going to look at the function f of x, right? On zero comma l. Okay, so kind of this is the information we're given. We're taking the odd extension. So it's just gonna be f of x on negative L to L. Okay. Um, cool, so what is its Fourier series? Well, this is something that we can compute. So this was actually one of the homework problems. And the piece that you may actually recognize takes the form minus 2L over n pi uh, cosine of n pi. So what was done here is we said, well, take this term cosine of n pi. It's going to either be plus one or minus one. So figure out when it's either depending on n, and then you know plug that in right there. Okay. So so that's what we did here. But you know if you just compute the integrals and you're content with you know it's a cosine of whatever, these are the terms that um, kind of we got from homework. In any case. So the odd extension of f of x equals x on this interval, right? The Fourier series is this. And again, right, it's an odd function. So we'd expect that we just have these odd uh, terms showing up, such so as uh, sign. Uh, so what happens if we differentiate each side? Okay, so differentiate x, right? We're going to get one. differentiate uh, this whole thing. Okay, what's gonna happen? Well, uh, this is a constant. So the only thing that's gonna get affected is sine. The derivative of sine of n pi over Lx is going to be n pi over L times cosine of n pi over Lx. Um, so then this n pi over Lx, that's gonna come out, that's gonna cancel with that. So the, the, the series that we get out by differentiating this bit is going to be this. Uh, kind of right two uh, with the sine times some cosine term. Okay. So one thing to notice, right, is that this summation starts at n equals one. Um, but kind of what we were just saying, right? Well, this is an odd function right here. Its derivative is going to be even. So here, what we're looking for is, well, we're trying to decompose one as an even function, some of even uh, cosine terms, okay. right? But if we want to decompose one, right, as cosine terms, well, one is a constant. So we'd expect that the cosine series for one is just going to be a constant. One, right? Um, so the question is, well, does this hold? In this case, no, it's not, because the Fourier series for one is just, right, one plus the sum of n equals one up to infinity of zero times cosine of whatever, right? And so what we're seeing here is, well, if we take this derivative, we don't just get a constant here, okay? So in this case, the uh, Fourier series of the derivative is not the same thing as, or sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. The Fourier series of the derivative here, right, where the Fourier series is just going to be equal to one, the Fourier series of the derivative is not equal to the derivative of the Fourier series, which is this thing right here. Okay. So this is a case where we've seen that. Right. If you just take the derivative of each side of the function and then the Fourier series, kind of the resulting pieces, right, are, are not going to be similar. Okay. Right. And so, yeah, so sort of as I wrote up there, so this, this is going to be equal to one, uh, one, this is equal to zero, which is not what we get. 
Okay, so here's an example where, right, just taking the derivative of the Fourier series, it doesn't match up with what we expect and what we'd like to get out. Okay. So this was working with the odd extension of f of x equals x. So we can ask a similar thing, but now with the even extension. Okay. So again, take the function f of x equals x on this interval 0 to l. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the even extension. The resulting function is going to be the absolute value of x. Okay. Um, so what is a Fourier series of the absolute value of x? Well, it turns out to be this thing. It's not too much of a monstrosity, but it's something that's computable. Okay. Um, and so I won't go through the derivation, but it's the, the, this object right here is a Fourier series of the even extension of x. So we can ask the same question. Right. Well, if we take a derivative, um, is the derivative of kind of the left hand side, or is the derivative of this series, is the resulting series the Fourier series of the derivative of this side? Okay. Um, so, one thing to note, right? Or, so, the question is uh, for this function, what is the derivative on each side? So over here, right? Well, it's a con or it's f of x equals x. So if we take the derivative, we're going to get the derivative is equal to one. So the derivative is equal to one over here. Derivative is equal to negative one over here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of all of this, and then since we have the absolute value, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this side over here. So the derivative of the absolute value of x over here, that's equal to one. Okay. Um, so that's that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of all of this. Okay. <clears throat> so the derivative of L over two, that's equal to zero. Um, take the derivative of this thing. Uh, this is going to pull out. It's going to cancel with an n and a pi. The l is going to cancel. So we're going to have uh, 4 over n pi. We're going to get a minus sign from the derivative of cosine, right? Derivative of cosine is minus sine. So this minus sine is going to go away. And so what we're going to end up with is this expression. Okay. Right, so oh, this comes out, pick up a minus sign from the derivative of cosine. Uh, things haven't canceled here yet, but if we take another step and actually cancel everything, what we're gonna get is that, right, the derivative of the Fourier series is kind of this expression right here, okay? But this is exactly the expansion of one. Uh, so I should say, so the, the kind of Fourier sine series of one, right, which we computed, well, we almost computed. So we computed the Fourier sine series of 100, but you know, divide by 100, you're good to go. Um, essentially what we get is that this thing right here is in fact, the Fourier, Fourier sine series of one, okay. um, right? So here's an instance where, well, if we differentiate the, uh, the even extension of X and it's Fourier series, right? The derivative on this side, it's Fourier series is exactly the derivative of this series, okay? Versus what happened up here, where the Fourier series of the derivative of this was not the uh, derivative of this Fourier series. Okay, so the takeaway is sometimes if you right differentiate the series, you end up with the Fourier series of the derivative. Other times that doesn't happen. So our question now is, well, right, when does it happen? 
let's see. Okay, so the claim is that, so if your Fourier series is continuous, okay, then you can differentiate it term by term, assuming that the derivative of the function is piecewise smooth. Okay. So this condition right here tells us that, well, um, the, the derivative of f has a nice Fourier series that we can work with. And that's what this condition is saying. Otherwise, in practice, what we want is that the Fourier series is continuous. If the Fourier series is continuous, right, generally the derivative will be nice enough um, so that, again, Fourier series is continuous, then we can differentiate it. So the question is, well, uh, when is a Fourier series continuous? Okay. Um, so there are two conditions, right? So the first condition is, well, it's continuous if kind of the actual function that you're taking the Fourier series of, if that function is continuous from negative L to L, okay? So there are no jump discontinuities kind of in the interior. And of course, if you have a, uh, that one of those discontinuities, the value of the Fourier series is the average of those two values. Okay, so we need the function to be continuous. We also need uh, that there aren't kind of discontinuities at f of minus l and f of l, right? So that's the second condition. Um, so we need the value of our function kind of at these endpoints. We need that value to kind of match up. So as an example of this, what we can do is we can take the periodic extensions of, so this is odd extension of f of x equals uh, x. And this was the even extension of f of x equals x. Right, so if we sketch the Fourier series for each of these um, kind of functions, well, how do we do that? Right, copy the profile over to the other interval. Uh, so in this case, it's that. At any point of discontinuity, we mark an X or something else kind of at the halfway point. So right there, right? We just have this point of discontinuity. Over here, Right. What is that periodic extension? Well, take the same profile, copy it over. We're going to get something like that. And so now we mark an X wherever there is a point of discontinuity. But in this case, this, this function, this periodic extension is continuous. Okay, So we're good to go. Uh, so if we go back up to the statement, right? The statement was, if your Fourier series is continuous, then we can differentiate it term by term and get the Fourier series of the derivative. So down here, this Fourier series is discontinuous. And then we saw that there were issues with the derivative of the series. Whereas this term or this series is continuous. And we saw that the derivative of the series was a series of the derivative. <clears throat> But kind of this, this is the main statement about when we can differentiate Fourier series. The, the, the main thing is we need the Fourier series to be continuous. Okay. Generally, the fact that F prime is nice enough, that's satisfied. Okay. All right. So the question is, well, why? Why does this work out? Um, and so kind of what I'll do now is give a sort of proof of this. Um, and how the proof works is we say, well, compute the Fourier series of the function and then take the derivative of that series. Uh, you'll get certain coefficients, whatever. Otherwise, take the derivative of the function and then compute its Fourier series, okay? And then we're gonna match the two resulting series and see what conditions kind of have to hold to make those two series equal, okay? So in this case, what we'll do is we'll focus on f of x equals odd, just to simplify kind of what we have to deal with. Um, but the situation where f of x is even, it's 
more or less the same same process. Okay. Okay. So suppose f of x is an odd function on the interval negative l to l. Okay. So if we expand f in terms of a Fourier series, right, it's an odd function. So right in its series expansion, we'd only expect to see odd pieces. So its Fourier series is going to be a sine series. Okay. Um, if we take its derivative in practice, right, the derivative of an odd function is even. Uh, so we expect that its derivative, the Fourier series of its derivative, are going to be just kind of cosine terms. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compute a sub zero and a sub n kind of from the definition of these coefficients. Okay. So what is a sub zero? Well, that's the right one over the length of the interval times right the integral of f prime of x between negative l and l. Um, fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that uh, this integral here is equal to this. Okay. Um, and so then, right, in this case, we're assuming that f of x equals odd, or f of x is odd. And so in particular, f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. So, right, we have an f of minus l here. This minus we can pull out because at, we're assuming f is odd. So what we end up with is, right, this is going to be two times f of l. And so the two that we pick up from here is going to cancel with that two. So we're going to be left with one over l, f of l. Okay. And this is the Fourier coefficient for the derivative of our function, or at least that, that constant term. Likewise, we can do the same thing with a sub n. So what is the definition of a sub n? Well, it's one over half the length of the interval times the integral from negative L to L of right, the function in consideration, right? because we're taking a Fourier series of this. Okay? Uh, the function in consideration times cosine of m pi over L x. Um, how do we simplify this? Well, what we're going to do is integration by parts. Okay. Recall that integration by parts takes the form integral of u dv is equal to, or I'll say from a to b, the integral of u dv from a to b is u times v, the value from a to b, minus the integral from a to b of v du. So, right, f prime is a derivative. f prime is essentially going to be this uh, dv. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this f prime to get f. Um, the other piece is u, and then u is going to turn into du. So we're going to differentiate this cosine and pi over one. And so here we have, so d dx, of cosine of n pi over l x. This is minus n pi over l sine of n pi over l x. Okay. Uh, so the first piece in integration by parts, u, which was cosine times v, which is the integral of f. So we're going to end up with that minus, again, the integral of f, which is, or the integral of f prime, which is f, times the derivative of the other piece, which is cosine. And so we should end up with this, right? So this is our du, f is our v, and otherwise we have a minus in front. Um, so let's see, so let's simplify a bit, or so what is this piece up here? Well, we're evaluating, right, this function at L and then subtracting it uh, from, or subtracting from it negative L. So plug in L here, cancel that, plug in L there, whatever, we end up with this. 
Um, the other piece is kind of working with this integral. So we're going to pull out this n pi over L out there. This sign is going to cancel with that sign. So we're going to end up with uh, this term. Okay. But now, right, it's interesting because sure, we have whatever's going on up here, which we can simplify. So f of negative L is negative f of L. Okay. So this is going to become a plus. This sign is going to go away. This sign is going to go away because cosine is even. Okay. But what we're going to get from this piece is um, twice two times f of L uh, cosine of n pi. Okay. But kind of the, the piece I want to highlight is, well, this one over L times this integral right here, yeah. this was exactly the coefficient b sub n in the Fourier series for f of x, right? It's here, b sub n, this was half the interval, one over L, L, uh, f of x sine of n pi over l x dx, right? So does it tell us? Well, this coefficient a sub n is exactly this, right? Twice this divided by l plus this, co uh, this constant times the coefficient from the sine series of f. So all we've done here is compute what these two coefficients have to be for this given function f prime, okay? And so now what we wanna do is we wanna compare these coefficients, right, to the coefficients we get by differentiating the series. All right, so what if we differentiate the series? Well, here, what we're gonna do is ddx of all of this, um, right, distribute across the sum, assume that can be done. This is a constant, so it's not gonna be affected by the derivative. So really we're just taking the derivative of the sign piece and then seeing what, what pops out, okay? So what do we get? Well, if we take the derivative of all of this, derivative of sine is cosine, this thing right here gets pulled out. And so we're left with this. Uh, so ddx of this is equal to that. Okay. okay. But it's interesting because this is a cosine series, right? So what we want is we want, right, the derivative of the series to be equal to the series of the derivative. Right, that, that would be the best case scenario, that the derivative of the Fourier series is the Fourier series of the derivative of the function. So what we want is we wanna match this thing up with um, kind of the, the coefficients that we're getting kind of otherwise, where we have uh, technically this should be a sub zero, and then we have these a sub n times these cosine terms, okay? So to get this general cosine series, to match up with what we computed the cosine series to be, well, a sub zero, we need to set to zero. We want that to be zero. Otherwise, a sub n, right? Well, this whole coefficient right here should be this whole coefficient right there, okay? So we want a sub n to be that. But from what we just computed, right, the Fourier coefficients for f prime well, a sub zero is this thing right here. And again, this was computed up here, right? This is a sub zero. Um, and then we also computed what a sub n was, right? It was this thing. Right? So if f sub l is zero, Right. If these two terms are zero, this is zero, this is zero. And then right, the Fourier coefficients we computed for f prime, 
those exactly match up with the Fourier coefficients or the, the, the coefficients for the derivative of the Fourier series, okay? Um, so I can write, so, yeah, so here we want f of l equal to zero. Again, this is so that the derivative of the Fourier series is exactly the Fourier series of the derivative. That's what we're looking for. That's the condition that we want to figure out. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And so kind of the observation next as well, right? Um, when is the periodic extension of f or f of x, when is that going to be continuous? So certainly we need f of x to be continuous on the interior. Okay. Um, what's left is, right, f of l may not be equal to f of minus l. Um, so if we want the periodic extension of f to be continuous, well, what we need is that, right, the value of f at the endpoints, they need to be equal, okay? So for the periodic extension of f to be continuous, right, well, first f needs to be continuous. We also need f of minus l to be equal to f of l, okay? Um, but, right, keep in mind we're assuming f is odd. So we get this condition, right? f of minus l is equal to minus f of l. So this negative sign we can pull out. Okay. So that's going to give us uh, f of l is equal to minus f of l. Um, but if your number is equal to negative of itself, what should your number be? Well, your number is going to be zero. So if we want our periodic extension to be continuous, then we need f of l to be zero, which forces f of minus l to also be zero, okay? Uh, so if f is continuous, this is the condition we want. So f of l is zero. And then what we get is this term becomes zero. Likewise, this term becomes zero. So all we're left with for a sub n is this n pi over l b sub n, which is exactly the coefficient we get when we just differentiate the Fourier series. Right, so if f is continuous and its periodic extension is continuous, then we have this condition, which forces right, a sub zero to be equal to zero, a sub n to be that, this becomes zero, and we're left with a sub n is n pi over l b sub n, which are the coefficients we get from differentiating the Fourier series, okay? So the conclusion is, right, if your Fourier series is continuous, then the derivative of that Fourier series is the Fourier series of the derivative of your function. Um, so kind of scrolling back up here, right? So again, when can we take derivatives of Fourier series and have them be kind of the Fourier series we want and we expect them to be? Exactly when the Fourier series is continuous. That is the condition we want to be kind of safe when taking derivatives, okay? This is the main thing to keep in mind. If your Fourier series is continuous, you can take derivatives and be good to go. Um, technically, you need to make sure that the derivative of your function is piecewise smooth or nice enough. Generally, that's, that's not an issue. But, okay. Anyways. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the last thing I want to mention is kind of applications to PDEs. How are these actually used to solve PDEs? So suppose we're given kind of the heat equation Say there's a K right there, but we're saying K is equal to one. And we're considering this PDE on the interval zero to L. And moreover, we have the boundary conditions, um, right? U of zero is equal to zero, or U of zero comma T is equal to zero. U of L comma T is also equal to zero, okay? 
So if we go through the standard method of separation of variables, superposition, et cetera, um, because of these boundary conditions, we are going to end up with a series representation like this. Okay. And so, right, you'll recognize that, well, here, at least in terms of X, we have an odd function because we only have these odd pieces. So implicitly what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we want a solution function U say on zero to L, but really what we're working with is the odd extension of U to the interval negative L to zero, okay? For that odd extension, we're taking a Fourier series because the value at L is equal to zero, that's gonna be the value of U at negative L as well. So then the Fourier series will be continuous, okay? assuming U is continuous. But okay, so sure. So separation of variables tells us, well, our series will look like this where we have some functions in T. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, assume that U, it's time derivative, it's spatial derivative, and it's second spatial derivative. Assume they're all continuous. What happens? Well, let's start taking derivatives, because why not? So if we take the time derivative, and then distribute it, right? So well and good. So over here, we're gonna get du uh, dt. Over here, the only piece that's gonna be affected is this, right? So the time derivative of u, what is its series? Assuming that u is continuous, well, it's gonna be this. Time derivative of b sub n, otherwise we just have the sine of whatever. Again, assuming u is, uh, u is continuous, so it's through a series is continuous. What is its x derivative? We'll distribute it. It's only going to hit the sine terms. And we're gonna end up with that. And so one more time, assuming that this series is continuous, take the derivative, what do we end up with? Well, it's only gonna hit this again. So this n pi over L is gonna come out. We're gonna pick up a minus sign. Otherwise we're gonna end up with sine, okay? So kind of these are the series of the pieces. And if we're assuming that these are all continuous, then we actually have a quality here on the interval zero to L. And so what we're interested in, again, is this, uh, is this PDE. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, this is the PDE we care about. What happens if we just plug in these series? So the derivative of uh, U with respect to time, that was this thing. So just plug that in there. Second derivative in space, that's this thing, okay? So now the question is, well, when do we have a quality of these two series? Okay. Certainly the signs match up. And so the only remaining piece is, well, this B sub N, which we haven't necessarily said what it is. Uh, this B sub N, we know something about its derivative and we know something about all of this, okay? So let's reorganize all of this in a way that kind of highlights what those pieces look like, okay? Um, so bring everything to one side. We're gonna get something like this, right? So bring all of this over there, uh, factor out each of these sine of n pi over L x. We're going to end up with this series, okay? And so the claim is that uh, this series is equal to zero for every possible x. What is the easiest way to enforce that? Well, let's make the coefficients of the things that depend on X, let's make these coefficients all equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna end up with this, this expression, right? All these coefficients are equal to zero. Um, and this holds for every possible index N. Okay. Uh, rearrange a little bit, what do we get? So move this, all of this stuff to the other side. Get that, um, divide by the b sub n, we're gonna get that. 
Now we're going to integrate. Uh, this is kind of a logarithmic derivative. Um, sort of is, is how we might say it. You can also write this as maybe like d b sub n over b sub n, and then the other side is what n pi over l pi squared. So you can also write in this way if you want, but regardless, integrating each side of this with respect to uh, t gives this expression, right? So the log of our mystery function is equal to this times t plus some arbitrary constant. Um, and then if we take the exponential of both sides, we end up with this expression, right? So sure, this constant also depends on n, um, technically the C sub N, this is equal to E to the C, but uh, in any case, what we see here is that, right, these coefficients B sub N of T, these turn out to be these exponentials, right, which we saw kind of previously when we went through the separation of variables procedure, okay? And so the, the difference is here, Right, we didn't actually look at that portion of kind of the ODE in the separation of variables. Instead, what we said is, well, we want a series uh, solution. What must these coefficients in T be so that this PDE is satisfied? If we just plug in, go through the steps, we see that, well, these coefficients B sub N of T have to be of this form which again, matches what we saw before, okay? And I believe this is the original kind of way that um, people use these series to solve um, the heat equation. Yeah, cool. So, right, takeaway is, well, what is the solution, right? U of X comma T for the heat equation? It's gonna be uh, this expression. Generally, we're given, you know, information about what happens at T equals zero. This would go to one, and then we solve the C sub n, right? And now we can move it four. Um, but in any case, yeah, here, here's our solution. Okay. Neat. And that is it for this video.